Well, hello there, friends. I've been meaning to make this video for those who have either gotten grains from me or somebody else and just need a couple of more tips on how to have a successful start with this whole beautiful process of providing yourself and your family with this delicious probiotic drink. And as you can see, I'm using a visual of this growing lizard that happens to be on the same countertop where my kefir um, is culturing. Um, I wanted to use this lizard as a symbol of, um, in a way, a commitment to your kefir. What I'm trying to do here is to show that kefir doesn't care what you look like, um, what your kitchen looks like. It's not going to wait for your countertop to look spotless and not to have anything that shouldn't be there. Um, it basically needs you when it needs you. And hopefully with this video, I'll um, teach you to, um, to know when it needs you. If I have shared my grains with you or if you have gotten them from somebody else who just gave them to you in a working condition like this, meaning they didn't have to freeze them or dehydrate them, uh, then this is what they're going to look like and you will put them into milk for fermentation. I'm going to show you first how I strain mine out of the kefir that I've already been making and then show how we will start a new batch. This one has been there for over 24 hours. I am putting it uh, through this strainer so I can retrieve my grains for the next batch of kefir. So I pour this into the strainer. I use my favorite bamboo spoon to strain it. Have <laughs> strained the rest of the kefir and I wanted to show you the amount of grains I used um, so you can have a better idea of how much milk to use so this is what I have and I know I started off even 24 hours ago with a little bit less uh, but they grow really nicely and just to be as precise as possible with my measurements here, I've put all of the grains that I've used on these two tablespoons. Now, how much milk am I going to use for this amount of grains? Again, I cannot tell you in cups, but I'm going to measure for you now. So I'm gonna put all of these grains back in my working jar. So I'm gonna call this jar working. It's the jar where I keep the grains and in room temperature for kefir making, okay? So here are the grains. Now, I'm gonna take this milk and I just use my judgment. But now, I, I don't measure, I just kinda have developed a feeling of how much milk I need to use. So I'll definitely put that much and more. So this is pretty much exactly exactly two cups of milk okay now while i'm doing this milk so milk needs to be not ultra pasteurized um now it could be and it actually tastes really nice more attractive to kids i hear but from what i and also understand kefir potential can only be used in at least non-ultra pasteurized milk, uh, preferably raw. I haven't used raw yet. Okay, so two cups, and I also want to say, let me see, I think I will put one more cup. Actually, yeah, I think that's how much I want to put. No, I'm gonna put one and a half. So this should produce a nice kefir within the next 24 hours. I would say between 12 and 16 hours, it's already, you know, good to go. Um, if you see that your kefir is not changing the texture of the milk, it means the bacteria, the uh, is still working. The grains are still working. They're still eating. So they need to eat so much milk uh, 
to convert the milk into kefir, basically. If you give it too little of milk, then the, their potential is not used fully and they, they are hungry, they need more. One of the ways to judge that is by seeing if your kefir has separated into uh, whey and then kefir too early before the 12 hour mark. That means you didn't give it enough kefir. Now, if after, I would say 36 hours, or even after 24 hours, very little is happening or nothing is happening, then it means you gave it too much milk, okay? So it's converting it, but you can't really tell because there's too much milk for that amount of grains to, um, to work on okay so tomorrow i will try to make a video of what this is going to look like so yes for sure for that amount of kefir grains like a handful okay uh so we put what three and a half cups of milk for the amount of grains i have given out to people i think it was about twice less than what i had here um i would put two two and a half cups of milk all right, so 11 and a half, almost 12 hours have passed. And here's the milk with kefir grains. And I can tell even by looking at it through the jar that it has not fermented yet. Now we're gonna look at um, what it looks like. Okay, so it is very runny Still and like milk consistency. Take off this uh, cream off of it so you can see there's cream here that might be throwing you off but so um, when I try to pour it uh, into a bowl you'll see that it is it's still milk with grains in it so, okay. so let's check on it in about six hours now watch this only two hours later so at a 14 hour kind of time uh this is what's happening on the bottom it means uh it's uh culturing all right so so much for my expertise here this took exactly 24 hours not 12 between 12 and 16 as i predicted i'm so glad i did this <laughs> um so remember about two tablespoonfuls of kefir grains and three and a cup, three and a half cups of milk and 24 hours later, you have nice and thick kefir that now needs to be strained through a mesh strainer and you will have your kefir and grains again for your next This is time. how much of the starter we used for three and a half cups of milk to make about three and a half or three cups of kefir. This is two um, and this is almost three and I had uh, one glass of it and it was delicious. So remember, two big overflowing tablespoonfuls of kefir grains, take three and a half cups of milk and 24 hours later, you have your delicious, absolutely amazing probiotic drink. Okay.